I think the biggest thing is is choosing what's right for you and and giving yourself grace to choose what's right for you. One of the things I've always gotten both credit and flack for is I don't follow the curve. Um, you know, everyone else is over here. You have to do this to be successful. I'm like, me, I'm going to go this way. And that's not always easy to do, especially when you've got other people in your industry or maybe even your spouse is saying, but this is what you're supposed to do. You have to stay on this path. And if that path doesn't feel right, get off the path. It's okay to try something different and give yourself the grace to choose what is going to help you reach that fulfillment. You're listening to the Midlife Fulfill Podcast, the show for men and women over 40 who want to thrive in midlife. I'm your host, Bernie Borges. I surveyed hundreds of men and women over the age of 40, and I discovered that 78% of them reported not to be fulfilled. That's when I realized that I wasn't alone. So I launched this podcast where I feature midlifers with an inspirational fulfillment story to share with you, as well as experts sharing information on a relevant topic that helps you thrive in your current midlife season. So stop beating yourself up. You deserve to thrive in midlife, and I want to help you with that. So listen up to this episode, and if you haven't subscribed to the Midlife Fulfill podcast, be sure to press the follow or subscribe button on your podcast player so that you don't miss future episodes. And subscribe to my weekly newsletter to get each episode delivered to your inbox, along with bonus content to help you thrive in midlife. And now, I invite you to prepare to be inspired, educated, challenged, or maybe all three. Enjoy this episode of the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast. Jen Herman, welcome to the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast, a maximum episode. Yay, I'm excited. So glad to have you, Jen. Well, Jen, I'm going to give my listener just a little introduction to you. Uh, you are a well-known, internationally famous social media consultant, speaker, and globally recognized Instagram expert. You are a sought-after international speaker providing tips and resources. You do training for organizations of all sizes, and your background includes administration, sales, human resources, marketing. And I love how you, you bring all those, those skills, that background together to help people grow their business using Instagram. You've been featured in a lot of media properties, Inc. Magazine, uh, uh, Fox News, BBC, Yahoo, Entrepreneur, HuffPost. I mean, the, the list is long. And you've authored Instagram for Dummies, Instagram business for, uh, for Business for Dummies, and the ultimate guide to social media marketing. Did I miss one? I thought there was a fourth one. So there's actually, yeah, there's two of each of the Instagram editions. So we have two for business, two okay. of the regular Instagram, and then the one um, social media. So technically okay. five so, books, yeah. All right, wow, okay. But you know, Jen, my favorite fun fact about you <laughs> is, and you know what that is, and that is that you have a master's degree in forensic science, yet you Damn. are a, a renowned Instagram <laughs> consultant speaker. So part of what I want to discuss with you is how you bring those two together. But I invited you on the podcast, Jen, because I saw a post you did on Instagram where you ranted, <laughs> you did, you ranted <laughs> I did. about this conflict between this high charging hustle and a balanced lifestyle. So I definitely want to talk about that. But first, Give us your backstory. Like, how did you get a master's degree in forensic science and then become this renowned Instagram consultant and speaker and author and all that? I mean, I always say I'm like, life happened. Uh, it was it was not the life plan I had by any means. So I, I grew up in Canada. I was doing my undergrad in biology and I moved to San Diego to do my master's in forensic science. I wanted to do that. I was all about CSI and crime scenes. And I've always wanted to be a detective and solve mysteries. And it was the perfect venue for me. Uh, and so I graduated top of my class with a master's in forensic science. And then life happened. At the time I had a sales job, I was doing outside sales in the restaurant industry. And that was when we went through the recession. And so it was like, okay, sales wasn't happening. People weren't eating at restaurants. It was a huge shift. I had to make some shifts in my career path. 
And along that path, I kept applying for these jobs in forensic science, but for bureaucracy reasons and various political in, inner workings of a lot of these types of entities, it was really hard to get a job. It was really hard to get my foot in the door. And so along the way, I, I kind of kept applying, but I was doing these other things with my career. And I ended up getting into more of the marketing side of things at my day job. And in that marketing role, I had to get, which is for a government contract company that works on military aircraft. So yeah. the kind of antithesis of who would use social media. Military doesn't want to share anything. The government contractors don't want to share anything about what we do. Really? That would, yeah, they because it's so closed kimono is kind of yeah. the phrase they use. They don't want anyone to know what you're doing. It's so secretive working in the military. Yeah. And so I had to get these executives to embrace using social media for my day job. And I did. We, we embraced it. We got much better about it. And in the process, I started this little blog called Jen's Trends in Social Media, which was a total hobby blog, no strategy, no business venture, no revenue. It was just, hey, like I'm bored on the weekends and I'll share some things I've learned in going through this process in my day job. And the blog gained momentum and I started making friends. This was back in the Google Plus days. This was over 10 years ago. And I had these friends who had Google Plus channels with hundreds of thousands of followers. And I had started dipping my toe into this little app called Instagram. And in that process was like, okay, well, how do we use this for business? Because my brain is very strategy oriented. And I was like, well, okay, there's all these articles on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook, but no one was teaching how to do Instagram. Hmm. And so I was like, all right, screw it, I'll do it. So I started blogging about Instagram and I would case study um, other accounts. I would try things. I would literally test something and it would work. And I'd be like, well, we'll blog about that. And so that was how I fell into the world of Instagram. And again, with all these friends with these Google Plus channels, they started inviting me to talk about it. And so I started building up this audience. And then I was invited onto podcasts. And then I started getting invited to speak at conferences. And so it kind of grew very organically out of, yeah, out of like no purpose of intention to wake up and be like, I'm going to be an Instagram expert. But I think what set me apart was that I have this scientific background. And yeah. so I would literally test everything. I wouldn't just come out and say, well, Instagram said this. And let's face it, 10 years ago, Instagram didn't tell us anything. So we, you couldn't just be like, well, do this. You, I would test it and I would say, okay, well, if I use certain filters, do we get certain results? If I use a certain number of hashtags, do we get certain results? I started having the luxury of working with people around the world who got to know me and they would say, Hey Jen, I'm going to, I'm going to try this over here in the UK. I'm going to try this over here in Australia. And as other people started testing it, we got more data, we got more insights. Hmm. And so I came out with this information. And I think that was why I got invited to so many of these conferences and podcasts, because right. it wasn't just the superfluous, use more hashtags, use pretty filters, but strategy and actually saying, if you do these three things, you're going to get results. And so and to this day, I still use my scientific background. I still test everything. I still work with my clients one-on-one -on -one, and I go and I read their insights. I read their data. I have them try things for six weeks. We pull new data sets and we compare the data because that is what shows actual success and, and value of what you're doing. Okay. Love that background. Very unique story, Jen. <laughs> Love that. At what point did you make the jump though from that full-time job? Like, when did you say, you know, I think I've got a business here? So I still have the full-time job. Uh, so I'm still working the full-time job. I've been there for 13 years and I've been running Jen's Trends for almost 11. So I've been doing both concurrently for oh, a very wow. long time. But it was one of those things where, and and for the sake of argument, my my Jen's Trends business is actually still successful in and of its own right. But I live in Southern California. I'm a single mom. I don't have any other financial support. I actually paid the alimony and child support to my ex-husband. So I need two incomes. And so I've had to find a way to balance keeping both in order to survive living in Southern California with the, the big girl bills that I have. But it was a challenge at first trying to balance and you know figure out how it works. But I've been doing it for so long now that my day job is like, cool, you do you, you know, we're good. We trust you. And, <laughs> and, you know, they have the world's leading expert on their staff. So, it, yeah. you know, it doesn't hurt yeah. them either. And, 
and I've, but I've had to learn and there are things I have to say no to. I can't sure. travel every week, obviously to speak at conferences. So I can't say yes to everything, but it's, it's allowed me to do the things that I'm passionate about, which is the Jen's trend side of it. I, I love speaking. I love working with my clients and, and I love, you know, helping people find success with, with Instagram. And it's definitely my passion project. But there's yeah. something great about having the stability of a day job and benefits and guaranteed right, paychecks. Right. And, so the best of both know, worlds. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So speaking of the best of both worlds or not, um, <laughs> let's get into the topic that I invited you to discuss. Uh, thank you for sharing that backstory. It helps a lot. It, it gives us really good context, Jen. So you, you I, I see your stuff on Instagram all the time. I'm one of your bazillion followers and fans. <laughs> And you posted recently something about this, you know, hustle culture that, you know, you can't have your cake and eat it too, or something to the effect you can't, you know, be in this hustle culture and also have a balanced lifestyle. So yeah. I'm going to invite you to share that rant here yeah. on the podcast. So, <laughs> and I do love a good rant. And I think my audience loves when I go, I'm like, I will literally be like, and rant over and they're like, don't stop ranting. Keep giving it. So this rant specifically was related to how many of the gurus, the top of the top in our industry, that 10 years into their career, when they have teams of people and they have millions of dollars in revenue and they have all this success and they go, you know, it's really important to work on your physical and mental health. And they share all these things about their, you know, they don't start work before 10 a.m. or they don't, they only work four days a week and they share all these luxuries of self-care, which is great. And I'm not saying those things aren't wonderful, but all of them got to this stage from the hustle culture. They mm -hmm. got there from working 14 hour days. They got there from sacrificing time with their families. They got there from, you know, just grinding and, and bootstrapping it with no revenue until they got someplace successful. And it it irks me when you have the who've hit these massive success that go back and say, you really shouldn't, you know, stress yourself out and work for 14 hour days. And I'm like, but you wouldn't be there if you hadn't done that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I ended the rant saying, I don't think one is right or wrong. It was more to say you have to pick which one and choose the resulting consequences, so to speak. So if you choose self-care, that is great. I support that. I'm working on my own self-care and trying to be better about that. But it means you're not going to grow your business to six figures in two years. It might take you five years. Or if you want to do the hustle culture, good, go for it. But understand that comes with you know, missing out on your kids' activities or milestones in their lives, or it's going to jeopardize your relationship with your spouse or partner. And you have to choose the balance that works for you, understanding that you can't do the self-care and grow your business at an exponential rate, unless you have millions of dollars socked away to support mm -hmm. a team of right. people helping you build a business. Right, right. Are you enjoying the Midlife Fulfill podcast? Whether you're a longtime listener or a new listener, I want you to know, that I'm on a mission to empower people over 40 to thrive in midlife. And I have a favor to ask. If you're enjoying the podcast, please share it with someone. Now, if you've already shared it with a friend, thank you. I really appreciate it. If you haven't, I bet you know someone who would enjoy the Midlife Fulfill podcast. And hey, sharing it is easy. Just find the share icon on your podcast player, tap it, and text or email it to a friend. It's that easy. And hey, I thank you. And maybe your friend will thank you too. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. I've always wanted to say that. I'm just a kid at heart. Yeah, no, I agree. I think um, I think it, it, it confuses a lot of people. You know, it, it gives people a sense of guilt, this false sense of, I've got to do the hustle culture, but I've also got to do the self care, yeah. but how do I do both? Right. Yeah. And to your point, it's, it, there's no right or wrong. It's all individual. I mean, I'll share with you. And of course with uh, my listener here, personally speaking for myself, I'm at a point in my life where that self care is important. Right. Yeah. So I'm up at 5.00 AM every morning and I've got a workout routine. I've got a, a little prayer routine. And then I do not look at email 
or social media before 7.30, even though I've been up since 5 a.m. But I do not look at email or any any work before 7.30 a.m. And then um, I do work in the evenings because I work full time and I'm doing the podcast. So, you know, that (laughs) certainly leads into the evening. But you know what, Jen? I'm in bed 10 o'clock at night. I'm in bed by 10. And whatever I'm working on, unless it's like really, you know, deadline critical, okay, which is the exception, not the norm. Whatever I'm working on, I am pacing myself and I'm going to be in bed by 10 o'clock because I'm up at 5 a.m. That's how I manage that self-care, you know? And, it's and just I think that's super us. important. Like it's, and again, I'm at this stage, I'm pushing into the mid forties range and I'm at this stage where I, it is important to me too. And I've got my daughter and I've got her schedule. And, you know, now that she's getting older, it's a lot more extracurricular activities than it was a couple yep, of years ago. Yep. And I'm still working the full-time job and I'm running my full-time business and I'm trying to balance all of these things and I have had to learn, like I've, I've let go of the hustle culture. I've done that. I did that. I, I did it for a long time and I've moved into this stage of balance. And that means to your point, like some days there, I have deadlines or projects that are maybe pushing me more than usual. And I may eat dinner at my desk, but 90% of the time I have a pretty good balanced routine from morning to night. I get eight hours of sleep every night. Cause I'm, I'm a diva and I will not sacrifice my sleep either. Yep. But with that means I'm not growing my business the way I was five years ago. Five years ago, I had exponential growth in my business. Now it's kind of plateaued. There's still growth. There's still other things happening, but I've chosen not to do the hustle grind, not to put in the, you know, the extra three hours every single day to do all the pitch emails, to do all the, the promotional content, to run ads, to do all these things. I've chosen to say, I'm at a stage where I'm okay. I'm comfortable. I want some growth, but we're going to do that growth at a much slower pace so that I can go for a walk every day. So I can spend time with my daughter every day so I can have my weekends off. But I also know that I'm at this stage of my career because I've been doing this for 10 years and I've built myself to a stage where I have the audience and the platform to be able to take that time off. Yeah. I I love it. You know, I have affirmations that I Mm -hmm. say out loud every morning. (laughs) And one of them is that I will take steps to grow my business, you know, my side business every day. Yeah, I will take steps every day. And so, and I know that there, some people would criticize that and say, well, that's not specific enough. You know, you're not being specific enough. And for the reasons you and I are discussing here, because I need that balanced lifestyle, yeah. that's enough for me because I hold myself accountable to that. Yeah. You know, that I know that I've got it in my mind that every day without exception, right. I've got to be taking steps. So and it I, could be I, sending an email that counts. You took a step that day. You sent an email, a pitch email, you responded to a potential client. Like you've reached out to more people on the podcast, like anything that that is a step towards growth. Exactly. Exactly. And then, you know, we, we have to be comfortable in our own skin, right? I know it's very cliche, but we have to be comfortable with that, that level of growth that we're experiencing now. And I'm wondering, Jen, do you have either a mastermind group or like a group of people that you talk to regularly, you know, about your business Mm -hmm. and about your, you know, overall, you know, work-life balance? I do. So for three years, I had a business coach. Um, I opted not to continue with her this year just for a a variety of reasons, not because she wasn't successful or anything. We worked great together. We both agreed it was time for me to move into a new stage in the best interest of of the growth of my business. So we, we no longer work together, but I worked with her for three years and she was instrumental to me learning my boundaries, to me setting expectations for my business, to setting up the processes that I need to continue to grow into the future. So that was hugely valuable for me. And then I also have a small mastermind of a couple of friends who are in the same industry in social media. And we are very mutually supportive of each other. So we vent, we, you know, we complain about things that are going on in our business or even our personal lives. But we also, you know, challenge each other. If if mm-hmm. we're working on something, we mutually support and share each other's stuff. 
um, we brainstorm. It's like, hey, I, I'm thinking about doing, like I recently launched my live show over on Instagram. And so they were very instrumental in helping me, you know, pick the title, pick the graphics, the, the topic, the direction, tips on running the podcast type format. Even though, again, I've been doing podcasts for years, but having that feedback, again, make sure you think about this, make sure you think about that and having those resources to help launch that successfully. So absolutely, I think no matter what industry you're in, you you need somebody who's not your spouse. You need somebody who's not your best friend. You need somebody who's in your industry that you trust, that wants to collaborate, not compete, and that can support you, whether it's in a group of two, three, five, 10 starts getting to be too many, too many opinions start to, <laughs> to, to muddy the waters. But you need that small group environment to help hold you accountable, to help challenge you, to help encourage you. Like we all have these days where we go, why am I doing this? Like, why did I get up today and choose this as a career? This was stupid. <laughs> and you need someone that goes, no, 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 this was a good decision. You're doing good things. And you can't put that burden on your spouse and your family because they're dealing with their own careers and right. their own burdens and then your family dynamic on top of it. They want to support you. Great. But you need a mastermind or support group of some sort in your industry that's going to yeah. lift you up and hold you accountable. So a thousand percent agree. Uh, I just, yeah, a thousand percent, 10, a million percent agree. <laughs> it, it's just so valuable. I wish yeah. I had done that earlier in my life. I really do. That's, you know, one of, one of the things that's on my regret list, you know, that mm. I hadn't, you know, really intentionally and thoughtfully pursued those kinds of relationships you know, when I was in my thirties and forties and, you know, even in my, my fifties, although in my fifties is kind of when it started to happen for me and right. I'm in my sixties now. But I, I think another thing that's interesting about having those relationships is that I can't speak for you, but I'll speak for me, Jen. And that is that for some reason I can look at someone else's life and business yeah. through a different pair, a different lens where yeah. I can see something that they may not see, but I can't do that for myself. Right? <laughs> do you experience or, or I that? always say we are our own worst enemies when it comes to this kind of thing, because we see all these other things. We see all the fuzzy edges. We see all the blurred lines. And and it's we're so deep into the the process of our business that it's really hard to pull yourself out and like you said, see what you can see in someone else's business. And that's where the mastermind or the coach can put, come in and be like, are you seeing this? And you go, I didn't see that. And they're like, oh my God, it's clear as day. But you would see that in somebody else's business as well. And they don't see it. What about fulfillment? What What's your perspective on fulfillment? You know, given, you know, your stage of life right now, where you are, uh, how do you view fulfillment? So my biggest thing, and this was actually an exercise that my my business coach had me go through was, you know, what's my biggest value? What do I want most out of life? And the single word that we dialed it down to was joy. And my word for 2023 was happiness. Um, even though joy has been my overarching thing for about four years now. But for me, it really is, I want to enjoy my life. I want to enjoy my daughter. I want to enjoy watching her grow up. I want to enjoy traveling and doing the things that light me up. And if I can, if I can achieve that through work, heck yes, that's amazing. If work is a means to an end to get there, that's great too. But for me, it really is the, the fulfillment is about living my life in a way that is joyful and that, that brings me joy. And that, is something that is only defined by me. Other people's definition of joy would obviously look different, but it, that's my big thing. And it's, it's choosing the various paths in life. And it means saying no to certain things. It means saying yes to other things that everyone else is like, Jen, what? No, don't do that. And I'm like, nope, that's what's going to make me happy. That's what's going to fulfill my life and make me feel good. And if I'm feeling good, I'm a better mom. I'm a better businesswoman. I'm a better partner. I'm a better friend. And I'm better for me. <laughs> so that's that has been my kind of, you know, North Star over the last few years has been choosing joy. That's great. That's great. 
So I think you know that when I speak of fulfillment, I speak of it across five pillars in mm -hmm. our midlife seasons, right? Health, fitness, career relationships, and legacy. And recently I've been speaking about the importance of legacy and mm -hmm. I've observed anecdotally, I don't have any research to back this up, Jen, but mm -hmm. I've observed anecdotally that a lot of people don't really think of legacy fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And to put a simple definition on that, Jen, it's just about what's the impact you're having on mm -hmm. fill in the blank, right? In your case, your daughter, uh, you, you might have a, a passion for something in your local community or whatever it might be, uh, you know, aside from your daughter, it may be more than, you know, you wanting to have an impact beyond just your daughter. It might be something else. Right. And so the point around that is that fulfillment while joy is fantastic. I share your passion for joy. Um, it can it can be uh, an up and down, up and down, up and down. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even by the moment, by the minute, by the hour, by the day, right? But fulfillment is so deep in your soul. And there's a word that I use to describe it, Jen, and the word is immutable. And immu mm -hmm. the definition of immutable is that it's permanent. It can't right. be can't undone. Be yeah. Right. And and so when you achieve legacy fulfillment, and I don't even want to restrict it to legacy fulfillment, but if you can really achieve fulfillment in any of those five pillars, it is immutable. You could have a bad yeah. day, but that fulfillment, you know, even where you are with your daughter now in third grade, right? I'm sure you have fulfillment for things she's already achieved at this young age. Fast forward high school, if she goes to college, whatever, whatever, you know, you'll have that fulfillment. A bad day can't take that away. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's why I'm so passionate about it is, you know, yeah. we've got to be chasing fulfillment because even on a bad day, it's, it's there. It's not, it never goes away. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the legacy. Um, that's something that's been on my, my plan over here <laughs> off to this side. Um, and that's part of why I have started transitioning a lot of my Instagram content where I share a lot of Instagram tips, a lot of tutorials, a lot of these things. But I've started moving into the, you know, the mom life, the business life, the the rant about balancing, you know, that right. the hustle culture and, and your health, because I actually I do. I want to move into more of a female empowerment direction. And I actually my passion in the long run will be to help um, high school and college women figure out how to enter the workforce with confidence, um, whether they're starting their own careers, doing entrepreneurial, whether they're going into the corporate world. And kind of like you were saying in the green room beforehand, you know, conferences, events, those sorts of things, sponsorships to help some of these women who may not normally be able to afford to attend these types of things. So there's definitely that's that's my long term legacy plan. I want to do as much as possible to help women find success in their careers in industries that maybe don't typically support female roles in the industry. So that's great. If I may offer a suggestion on that. Yeah. And that's, a, it's a pretty simple one. And uh, I'm not a mind reader, but chances are you're already thinking about this. <laughs> and that is that what, when you're focused on that, when you're, you're doing your thing on that, think of men like me who mm -hmm. are allies for women. Yes. Right. Don't exclude men, include yeah. men as allies. Yes, absolutely. Great. I'm, I'm Great. lucky to have lots of allies in my life who are yes. very supportive and they're it's it's key right across the board no matter what the industry is no matter what the um the class or denomination is that that needs support we always need allies outside of that group as well yeah well jim before we wrap up here um any closing thought on this whole conversation uh just any aspect of it I think the biggest thing is is choosing what's right for you and and giving yourself grace to choose what's right for you. One of the things I've always gotten both credit and flack for is I don't follow the curve. Um, you know, everyone else is over here. You have to do this to be successful. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go this way. And that's not always easy to do, especially when you've got other people in your industry or maybe even your spouse is saying, but this is what you're supposed to do. You have to stay on this path. And if that path doesn't feel right, get off the path. It's okay to try something different and give yourself the grace to choose what is going to help you reach that fulfillment. That's going to help you choose whatever in your career or personal life is going to make it work for you because you're the only person who really knows what that is. Great advice. And again, I'm just agreeing with you a thousand percent on this whole <laughs> conversation. <laughs> I love it. I love when we're on the same page. <laughs> 
Jen, where would you like to send my listener to learn more about you and just connect with you and your world? So I'm pretty much everywhere as Jen's Trends. That's J-E-N-N-S. There's two N's in Jen. Uh, so jenstrends.com is my website where you can find out about how to work with me on all things related to Instagram. Uh, and you can find me on Instagram at J-E-N-N-S underscore trends. And that's where I shared the rant that got us onto the podcast today and a bunch of other life experiences as well as lots of Instagram tips. So if you're interested on how to grow your business on Instagram, check me out there. I also have a membership called Profit Your Profile dedicated to business and Instagram training. So you can always check out more information at ProfitYourProfile.com. Fantastic. Well, Jen, my listener knows that all that is linked up in the show notes. So it's all there, easily accessible. Jen, I just want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day, right in the middle of your work day and just your <laughs> life to join me for this maximum episode for uh, just a, a great conversation on a topic that I think is an important topic. And I don't, I don't hear a lot on this topic. So thank you for sharing your wisdom, your insights, and uh, your life experiences on this topic. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast. I hope you were inspired, informed, challenged, or all three. I'm on a mission to reach men and women over 40 who want to thrive. And if you're wondering how you can help me reach more midlifers, it's easy. First, be sure to press the subscribe button on your favorite podcast player so that you don't miss future episodes. Secondly, Share the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast with someone you know. Thirdly, and this is my biggest ask, rate or review this podcast either in Apple Podcasts or your podcast player of choice. Hey, this is my favorite part of each episode because this is where I remind you that if you're 80% fulfilled, you're doing great. And if you want me to prove this to you, listen to episode 100. I'm your host, Bernie Borges, and I'll catch you on the next episode of the Midlife Fulfilled Podcast.